All right, folks. Sorry about the bad camera angle. I seem to do that a lot, don't I? I think I'd learn. Anyhow, um, I was talking with Model Man Tom the other day, and he's starting up a new type of lighting. Now, I wouldn't say it's a new type of lighting because I find this kind of lighting all the time. It's these LED light strips. And what I have here in my hand is some single density. He's selling double density. It has double amount of LEDs on them. Now, I'm not set up to light a bunch of these at one time. I haven't set things up to do that with. Okay. But um, I do have one lit up right here, as you can see. And the camera it makes a nice glow on the camera. I have to be careful because I'll get a short. And i got a pretty strong power supply, and I don't really want to short that. The camera, it's got a nice fuzzy glow to it. And if I cut this off, you can see it. And the camera sees it as one big fuzzy bar. That's this camera. My, um, let's see what happens when I zoom that in. Let's see what the camera does. Yeah, it's still seeing it as one big fuzzy bar. That might be because I have a filter on the lens. Let me take that filter off and see what happens. Yeah, nothing. That filter is just a UV filter. It's there to protect the lens so I don't get her messed up. But to the eye, I can see hot spots on that very easily. Now, Tom was taking some wax paper. And you can see when I add some wax paper, the hot spots disappear. And I can see it with my naked eye that the hot spots disappear. If I can get about two inches away from that tape, the hot spots are gone. About two inches. So I have to put the two the wax paper about two inches away from that tape and it, it lights up. Now I've also got this running at 12 volts, which is the maximum voltage I would use. It's a voltage it was designed for. If I cut the voltage down to two, it goes off. Now, if I start cranking this voltage up, hold on a second, I've got to make sure I'm cranking it up. We're at 4 volts, 5 volts, 6 volts, 7 volts. Let's restart and see if we can get lidage. Nope, 7 volts it doesn't light. 8 volts it lights. 9. That's 9. And let me shut this off and put it back on 10. I'm using a lab power supply here. I got off eBay for next to nothing so I can adjust the voltage however I want there's 10 volts 11 volts 12 volts and you can see it jumping in brightness I wouldn't use it over 12 volts again because that's what it's designed for it'll power up over 12 volts but the lifetime of the strip will be decreased dramatically that's one thing about LEDs um, you don't want to overpower them. If you use too high a voltage, they're going to be brighter, but they burn up faster. So I wouldn't use over 12. I'd probably use it on 9. Let me cut this back off and put her back on 9. I have to do some settings over here to get her on 9. Nah, that's just too dim at 9. Way too dim at 9 for my use. I'm going to have to go with 12. Alright, now... One other thing, and I'm going to get some more of these out and play with them and probably do some short segments with different colors going. This is the waterproof version, and actually I think the waterproof version is kind of neat feeling, but I can see how some people wouldn't like it. All right. One thing I'm going to um, say real quick. I wanted to compare it to a cold cathode. I can't find them. I had a whole bunch of cold cathodes set aside in a box. I spent an hour tonight looking for them, and I don't have any more time to do that with. I have a long day at work tomorrow, and I'm near bedtime right now. Um, so, what I'm going... If, if I really, really want to compare that to a cold cathode, what I'm going to have to do is pull one out of a computer, because I used to do a lot of computer case modding. And I have two or three computers just sitting idle right now with co-cathodes in them, so I could pull one out, compare it that way. But there's one thing, and this is why I got talking with Tom about this when he said he was going to start selling these. One thing about this is the cold cathodes put out a lot of heat. 
I can put my fingers on this and it's just vaguely warm and it's running at 12 volts right now. Cold cathode um, puts out about three times much as much heat. Now why is that an issue? That is an issue because when you're putting out that much heat, you're going to heat up the inside your model. It's got nowhere to go unless you put a cooling fan on your model. Computers have cooling fans. They can tolerate something like that inside their case. Model can't. So that's why I'm thinking this might be a good idea. Let me stop here and get some of the other ones going so we can see what's up. Everyone, here's the cool white, and it lights up pretty good. Now, this does not have the weather stripping on it, so I get my wax paper over it. You can see when you get it far enough away, it is going to be a light strip and not dots. The trick is to get the white wax paper far enough away. Tom on his videos was doubling it up. And doubling it up, you don't have to be quite as far away. Then the reason you're using the white wax paper is it helps diffuse the light. It's got an irregular surface and it's opaque. All right. I've used milk jug, plastic milk jug for the same effect and it actually works a little bit better because it's an irregular surface. But this isn't too bad. It, this heats up more than the other one did, the weatherproof strip. I'm noticing that. It's putting out some heat. Anyhow, let's switch colors and see what we get. Alright? Alright, here is the warm white. This is the same color as the water stripped ones, the waterproof ones I was lighting up earlier. and. Yes, it's heating up. My hand's getting warm. It's not heating up appreciably much, but it is heating. And you also got to remember I'm holding three feet of this stuff in my hands. So the heat output would be a little bit lowered. And you can see, yes, the wax paper is giving an opaque. For some reason, my camera's really not liking this, and I don't know why. I got a single density strip here I'm going to try in a second. So let's see what the difference is there. See if my camera can handle it. It's also the single density strip is a different color. Okay, here we have the single density. And my camera is picking up the difference there. You can see the individual LEDs in my camera. Okay, I might have to switch cameras and try this with a different camera in a little bit and see if it's picking up the difference in the, um, the hot spots with the double density strip. But there's the single density. This is supposed to be purple. It's not the UV purple that I get out of some LEDs. This is purple purple. Alright, so let me stop. I got one more color I'm going to pull up and I might try a different camera in a bit. So I'll be back in a sec. All right, here's my last color. It's a nice rosy pink, and I can see Nelly doing this with her Millennium Falcon and making this the engine. I can see it. She loves pink. She's building a pink Corvette and a few other things. Now, let's zoom in a little bit because I noticed my camera can distinguish different LEDs at the right zoom. Model Man Tom was taking this wax paper. He was laying it over it. And yes, you can see the wax paper does opaque it. That's double layer. Here's single layer. And I'm almost on the better. If I crumple it up and put it over that, the crumple up does help opaque, you know, hide the hot spots. Now, you wouldn't see the crumpled up wax paper because you'd have a plastic lens for your engine over it. You could frost that lens, put some crumpled up wax paper in there between here and there. And I don't think these things get hot enough to melt that wax paper. There's also something called parchment paper that's silicon impregnated and that won't catch on fire because that's for making cookies and stuff like that in the oven. And I have dumped, oh, I've made brittle on that parchment paper and it didn't scorch or anything. So I'll be back. I'm going to go get some parchment paper and let's see how that works with this. Folks, I'm back. I got my nice rosy pink glow here. Let's get that zoomed in so we can see the individual LEDs again. Okay. This time parchment paper. And parchment paper, just a little bit off of there works beautifully to remove hot spots. And I'll show let me turn some lights on. Let me get this off. I'm gonna get some blue LEDs in a minute so you guys can see what's going on. 
and let me show you the difference between parchment paper and regular wax paper. Here's wax paper. It is somewhat transparent. You can see my hand through it. Here's parchment paper. You can't see my hand through it hardly at all. This stuff is closer to a thin tissue paper, but it's going to tolerate heat very, very well because it's designed for baking. And I've used it with candy making. I, I make my own candy. We're not going to get into why. But whenever I want candy, I have to make it. I don't eat store-bought candy. Couldn't tell with the belly I got. But anyhow, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to get the blue LEDs out because a lot of you would want to use blue to light a Millennium Falcon. So let me get the blue. One, I got the blue lit up. It's running right across my desk, as you can see. Nice bright strip there. I'm going to zoom in on a spot so you can get to see the individual LEDs a little bit although my camera is not liking this blue color taking a piece of wax paper laying it across there and you can see that diffuses the light very well you know let me try something let me kill the ambient lighting in here completely real quick and see what that does on camera well, I haven't closed it 100% there no more ambient lighting all we have is this light strip and if I put this over it you can see it takes a hot spot right out and my camera is trying to adjust its focus but I can see it in person that it takes a hot spot right out of the picture ignore the wookie sound in the background that's Nelly sending me a text and with the parchment paper it's the hot spots are almost completely gone especially if you double up the hot parchment paper okay Again, my camera is not liking this too well. It's just the way it is. So, let me back this out and let's talk about what's going on here. Let me get some light back in here unless you want to talk to me. Have me talk to you with this evil blue glow on half the side of my face. That might be cool. First off, the reason I'm reviewing a product like this is I'm doing a lighting tutorial for uh, the Millennium Falcon group build in October at Scale Model Addict. And Model Man Tom saw that I was doing that and he contacted me and said, hey, how are you going to light the engines in that thing? I was going to use a compact fluorescent light. The reason I was hesitant for that is one, they're fragile. If you've never worked with them before, you can break them pretty easily. I broke the first three or four I was working with. They need a very steady power supply. You start fluctuating the power too much, they'll burn out. You overdrive them, they burn out. Um, they have a, what is it, 20,000 hour lifespan. LEDs, if they're powered properly, have an 80,000 hour lifespan. That's 10 years left on. I can leave this on for 10 years with the proper voltage and it won't burn out. Now, heat. Heat is another problem. This is putting out heat. When you put it in a single layer like this and it's not rolled up, it isn't an extreme amount of heat. It's, it's, it's manageable. Okay. There's going to be some funny issues with this. The beginners are going to have a little bit of trouble with it at the beginning. I'm going to do a tutorial on that. The, 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 the trouble part is um, soldering wires to it. If you haven't done any soldering before, that'll be interesting. You can't wire wrap this. You're going to have to solder it. I'm not a big fan of wire wrapping anyhow. I'm going to do the soldering tutorial here in the next few days. That's going to be the first one that goes up. So you'll see this after the soldering tutorial. Okay. Um, anyhow, I think that about wraps it up. Model Man Tom's going to sell this stuff. You'll be able to buy it from him with little or no trouble. I just wanted to give you guys a review of it. I'm probably going to use this for lighting Millennium Falcon. It, it's going to be easy enough to get rid of these hot spots. The single density, it's a lot harder to get rid of the lot, hot spots. But the, this thing's got the LEDs stripped pretty close together. Anyhow, folks, I'm going to go. Nellie sent me a text. I want to talk to her. I'll talk to you guys later.